After failing to locate Arya, Podrick questions Brienne if they intend to journey to Castle Black to see if Sansa Stark has been taken in by her half-brother Jon Snow. Brienne dismisses the idea of the two of them continuing to travel together, as Podrick is now hundreds of miles from the dangers of King's Landing. Podrick wishes to remain with Brienne as her squire in order to locate Sansa, but she sharply reminds him that she is not a knight, nor his mother. Brienne laments that the only thing she ever wanted was to fight for a lord she believed in, but now all the good lords are dead and the rest are monsters. While resting at an inn, Podrick spots Petter Bellish and Sansa Stark on the other side of the inn, surrounded by knights. Although she has dyed her hair, Podrick tells Brienne that he is confident that the girl sitting with Petter is Sansa. Unfortunately, the situation turns ugly after Sansa rejects Brienne's offer of protection. Brienne and Podrick are forced to flee on horseback from their pursuers. Podrick is separated from Brienne and is reared off his horse before being attacked by one of the guards. Fortunately, Brienne saves him by killing the two guards sent after them and orders Podrick get back on his horse. Even though Podrick reminds her that both Stark girls have rejected her offer of protection, Brienne is adamant about following Sansa. Brienne and Podrick witness Petter and Sansa approach Moat Kalen. Realizing that following them through the castle would be futile, she decides to bypass the Moat Kalen by going around. Although Podrick is worried about losing sight of them, Brienne tells him that they don't need to follow them so closely because she knows where they are going. Making camp, Brienne learns how Podrick became Tyrion Lannister's squire. During the War of the Five Kings he squired for a knight named Lorimer who stole a ham while drunk, which he shared with Podrick. Just before he was to be hanged, Podrick was spared when Lord Tywin heard his family name, pardoned him, and sent him to squire for Tyrion as punishment for both of them, although Podrick was quite happy in Tyrion's service. While Brienne assumes that Podrick must hate being in her service, he is actually proud to be her squire and admires her martial prowess. Brienne apologizes for her rude behavior towards Podrick and offers to teach him how to wield a sword and ride a horse properly. Though she can't knight him, she will teach him how to defend himself, which he agrees is more important. Brienne then reveals her past with Renly Baratheon to Podrick. He tells her that Tyrion acknowledged Renly as a good man, but wonders if the rumors about Renly were true. Brienne admits she knew that Renly was only interested in men. She says that there is nothing more hateful than failing to protect the ones you love and intends to avenge Renly by killing Stannis Baratheon, whom she believes played a role in Renly's murder. Brienne and Podrick finally reach Winterfell and get a room in a nearby inn at the Wintertown. Podrick suggests that Sansa may be safe from the Lannisters in her childhood home, but Brienne, knowing of the atrocities that Ruse and Ramsay Bolton have committed towards other houses, corrects him by claiming that Sansa is in danger, even if she doesn't know it. They meet an old servant whom Brienne deduces is still loyal to the Starks, and has him send a message to Sansa for them. Brienne and Podrick continue to wait for Sansa's signal, watching the window of the tower at every opportunity. While returning from a supply run, he sights Stannis Baratheon and his army marching to Winterfell. Recognizing them from the banners he had seen during the Battle of Blackwater, he returns to their camp and informs Brienne about Stannis, causing them to abandon their lookout and go after Stannis.